There are multiple ways to set dates within my courses. This tutorial will explain the difference between start, due, and end dates. It is important that you understand how these dates affect the student experience. You may want to review the tutorial on how dates affect the student experience because in that tutorial you'll learn how from the student's perspective when you set these start and end and due dates what the student sees and what they can do or can't do. Below is an explanation. I'm going to explain now the three possible dates that you can set within the course content area. So I'm going to click on the course content area and I'm going to explain the three kinds of things you can do in the course content area. Whereas in the submission review area you can't do a lot of the, the due dates. In this area it can do start, due, and end date. So what is a start date? The start date is when students will not, let me emphasize, will not be able to access content, submit to a Dropbox, post to a discussion, or take a quiz until the date is reached. They cannot see any instructions that are set on the Dropbox or discussion topic, but, can, but if you set up the quiz to show description, they can. So let me show you what I'm talking about here. Here's my discussion. Here's my discussion prompt. I'm going to go ahead and now set up a start date. And I'll put the start date into the future of this particular um, tutorial. So that's, and now what I'm going to do is just do a very simple role switch to the view of the student. I'm going to click on the course content. And in module one, you'll notice the student cannot click on that, nor can they see the instructions. If I did the, put a start date on the Dropbox, the same thing. They would not see the instructions. If I go to the submission review area and discussions, what's going to happen is the student's not going to even see the discussion. It's going to hide it. Again, you may want to review the tutorial on what the student's view is to get even more in-depth into that. I'm just giving a cursory view of that. So that's the start date. I'm going to go ahead and get rid of the start date. Due date. The students will be able to access the content, submit to the Dropbox, post to a discussion, or take the quiz at any time. When the due date is reached, students will still have access to all the content, including quizzes, Dropbox, or discussion topics. The only difference is, discuss is I'm sorry, Dropboxes are the only item you'll see the submission flagged as late, Dropboxes. So the due date on a, on a discussion or on a quiz really does nothing. All it does is tell the student that the item is due, but when, the, when, the, when, the, when it's past due, you will not see that the submission is flagged as late. You'll have to figure that out on your own. So there's really no reason to use a due date there. Finally, the end date. The end date, students will not be able to take uh, access to content, submit to a Dropbox, post to a discussion, or take a quiz after the date has passed. They can, however, access their submissions on quizzes and drop boxes. The big difference is, is that with discussions, they will not be able to view the discussion topic threads or post. The discussion topic becomes hidden from their view. So if I have an end date on a discussion or a start date on the discussion, it's hidden. If I have an end date on a drop box, let me go there, let me do this. If I have an end date, on a Dropbox, and let me put the end date, let's say, before this date, or on a quiz, then from the student perspective, when the student comes into the content area, you'll notice that it ended. I can't click there, but if they go to Submission Review and Drop Boxes, you'll notice that this has closed. But if they have a submission and this one is closed, you'll notice that they can get back to their submission and they can view their feedback. The same thing with a quiz. If I put an end date on a quiz, what can happen there, and again, I can do this here or in the submission review area. If I put an end date on a quiz, again, I'll close it. If it, from the student's perspective, Again, what the student will see, they can't. They can click on that, but the start button is not there. They can't get to the review unless they go to the quizzes. And in this case, they can go here and go to submission and view their submissions. So there's a couple little other scenarios just to keep in mind. If you do not set any dates, 
So let's look at the course content here. I don't set any dates on the content or on the modules. That means that the discussion topics, the content, drop boxes, and quizzes are always available to them. You may want to review the tutorial on best practices on setting up dates on discussion topics, drop boxes, and quizzes to learn more about how all these dates affect, again, the students and what's your best practice. You also have a choice to set either the start, do, or end date, as I've shown, or any combination of the case. In most cases, faculty will use the start and end date only. If you want to restrict content, discussion topics, and drop boxes or quizzes when setting dates, the due date should only be used when you do not want to restrict the student's access to content, drop boxes, discussions, or quizzes, but you want to provide them an idea of when items are due. So I hope this tutorial was helpful in explaining um, a little bit about what start, do, and end dates are and a little bit about how they affect students. Again, please review the other tutorials about understanding dates to learn more.